Hello friends, I'm Colonel Failure and this is a brief overview of getting started in Transport Fever. Through playing the game, I've discovered that starting in 1850, it's actually pretty tough to make a profit in the initial few years. So what I've done is I've tried various different transport options to try and find a way to make a few quid in the first 10 years. Obviously, the examples I'm about to give will differ to the way that you play the game yourself. You may find other efficient means of making a profit early on. But what I'm trying to do is give you just a few examples of ways in which you can make some money in order to grow your network faster. While there's a clear winner among the methods that I've chosen, you may find that something different works entirely, and much of it will come down to the map that you've selected and the setup options that you've decided to go for. First things first, I've decided to set myself a few rules. Initially, I'm only allowed to set up one network. Now that network may involve multiple different transport types and multiple different towns, but I'm not allowed to extend it as the 10 year period continues. Secondly, where possible, I've got to stay within my initial 2 million loan budget. Thirdly, where possible, I've actually got to pay the loan down as the 10 years continues. Now, this is a great idea, obviously, because it's going to save me some money on interest as the time expires. So, my settings for this example series are as follows. I've taken medium across the line, including map size and hilliness and difficulty. Obviously, we'll be starting in 1850. It gets a little bit easier, although more expensive, if you start in a later year. For those of you wishing to recreate this map yourselves, I've used the European setup and the seed kernel failure. Now, before you place anything at all, the first thing you're going to want to do is survey the map. Train fever veterans might be tempted to set up a coach route in between each pair of towns because that was the route one to making a significant amount of money early in the game. It's not going to work. Likewise, setting up immediate truck routes from all your goods suppliers to various different places equally isn't going to work. The key to the early stage of the game is keeping your running costs as low as possible while generating the highest possible income. As such, you're going to want to avoid huge outlays for network provision at the very start of the game. Instead, you want to build this up gradually. You will build far less than you did in Train Fever, and you will do so at a slower pace. The upshot is that you will build networks that feel busier, that make more profit, and that generally help to grow the towns that you're working in. Right, because it's a new feature, the first thing I've decided to give a try is passenger shipping. You start out with a ship that will quite happily handle 50 passengers at a time. That's nice, moves people around quite swiftly. Likewise, this river has got a good selection of different places I can drop people off. So a route from Blackwater to Winslow to Cheshunt could work quite nicely. There are some bridges in the way that I'll need to get rid of, and likewise, it's not inexpensive to place ports. But the thinking is that linking up these ships with an in-town coach service should provide enough people turning up in order for me to make some cash. The goal here is to place my ports as close to the centre of town as possible, without having to delete too many buildings in the process. Uh, deleting a 100,000 building at the start of the game is, well, that's one twentieth of your budget blown in, in no time at all. This should allow the catchment area of those ports to pick up a relatively large amount of passengers without relying on the commuter services that I'll also add. Those commuter services will make sure that people who arrive at the port can reach all of the different destinations in town, whether that's industrial, commercial or residential. Obviously, I'm going to have to replicate this across all three towns, and then I'm going to want to make sure I've got the coaches necessary to pull people around. Now, coaches are expensive. They might seem cheap initially, but they increase in maintenance cost every year that passes. So starting out with 10 coaches, if each coach increases in maintenance cost by $100 per year, that means per year you're losing an extra $1,000. So keep the number of coaches you use as light as possible, at least until we have a profitable service that can carry additional costs. Okay, so after about 20 minutes footling around, I've got 
three in-town coach services with three coaches running on each to three different stops. Those, hopefully, will drive a little bit of demand towards the ports themselves. I've also added, surprisingly, three ships to the route that connects all those cities in an ABCBA fashion. The goal here is that the in-town coach services will actually generate enough revenue to cover their costs and then some. Let's not forget that every coach requires stops, and those stops also have to be paid for on an annual basis. If the coaches are doing their job correctly, they will also be bringing passengers to each of the ports. If those passengers can fill the ships, then there is a high chance that this could be quite a profitable service. With everything in place, I'm going to fast forward now and see where we get to within 10 years. Well, this all looks quite promising, doesn't it? Loads of passengers waiting for the next ship and a fully loaded ship ready to drop off. The problem is that this happens so infrequently that you don't make any money at all. While an individual ship will quite happily pay for its costs, it's not making enough revenue on top in order to pay for the costs of everything else. Likewise, road income is heavily, heavily dependent on passenger ships actually dropping off in the first place. If a ship is not dropping off, those interior routes are not going to have passengers to pick up from at least one of those stops, and as such, they're going to be hard pressed in order to make a profit all year round. In fact, out of the 10 years of this experiment, this route only made profit in one year. Now, I don't think that my interior routes were as profitable as they might be. Likewise, there may have been better places I could put these ports. But the fact of the matter is, these ships are so slow that they're not going to deliver you profit on a regular basis. Meanwhile, your running costs will continue to run no matter what. As you can see, the maintenance cost of my water fleet was only 100,000. Meanwhile, in a good year, they were bringing in 300,000. The average, however, is probably closer to 150,000, at which point the property maintenance and loan interest is going to bite you pretty hard. Overall, therefore, I wouldn't recommend starting with passenger ships. They have their place most definitely, but largely I'd use them for short hops across lakes. This will give you a nice regular service that should easily cover the costs of the ships and should provide a good feeder to your train services that work on an intercity basis. As far as ships alone, however, I don't think they're going to make you the right kind of profit in the early part of the game. Since I'd quite like to make a profitable shipping route, I've decided to have a look at goods. Now, just outside Blackwater, there's a farm that produces both grain and livestock. This can then be processed by dropping it off at the processing plant right next to Desborough. This isn't a bad place to start off since it means that there are at least two towns within range of my production network. And as such, I'll be able to provide my goods to end consumers. This is an important thing to note because while your production chain will make profit at every step of the way, if you do not have end consumers, you will rapidly get goods building up. And this in turn will lead to the rest of your chain grinding to a halt and with it, your profits will rapidly disappear. The key to good services in Transport Fever is the distance between points A and B and the speed at which you can make that delivery. Placing your docks and truck stops, therefore, is of paramount importance. You want to ensure that your route is as short as it can possibly be. Every extra manoeuvre or turn that your truck or ship has to make will erode your profitability. It's therefore worth taking the time to make sure that before you place something, you've actually got it as close to its destination as possible. This is likely to involve you placing roads that are subsequently deleted, while you try out different areas to put your docks in to try and make sure that you remain in the catchment area. If there is just no way of getting your docks right next to the facility you wish to use, don't worry too much about using a truck shuttle. These very short point-to-point -point services with trucks can actually be very profitable. The secret to maintaining that profitability, however, is making sure that your trucks wait until full, since any vehicle that is waiting at a stop is actually cheaper to maintain than one that is in motion. So if you've got a truck that is constantly rolling empty, you might want to think about adding a wait until full order at some point on that route. So for this second experiment, I'm running two docks with one ship moving between them. From the first dock, it should pick up either grain or livestock, depending on which there is more of. It will then drop those goods at the second dock. And if there is food waiting, it will bring it back. This is actually very helpful, as it means that your ship can be profitable in both directions. 
At the farm end, I'm then using a truck shuttle service to pick up grain or livestock from the truck stop nearest to it and then drop it at the stop nearest the cargo port. If the cargo ship has then dropped off food, these shuttles will pick up the food and drop it to the nearby truck stop. From this truck stop, it's then transported by three separate trucks over to Blackwater. Likewise, at the end of the processing plant, I've got a shuttle service that is picking up raw goods and dropping them off at the processing plant. Again, these trucks will then bring food back to the docks. Likewise, that second truck stop will also have food waiting, which can be picked up and taken into Desborough. All in all, I'm quite keen on this route. It might seem overly convoluted given the amount of truck stops involved. However, what it means is that my shuttles can make profit in both directions. Likewise, there should be a steady flow of goods in between the two docks and the two production centres. The one thing I don't know is whether I've got enough trucks to actually be able to carry all the food I'm producing to the final destination. If I've got this wrong, this network will break down. Anyway, let's fast forward 10 years and see how this has got on. So here we are 10 years later and it's close. Um, now th this is definitely, there is definitely profits to be made uh, off of this line. Now first thing, it's um, it's cheap, right? So, uh, so I came up, uh, no, I ended up with uh, half a million left from uh, from the initial setup which i used immediately to pay down the loan now over 10 years that's resulted in me being 70,000 in uh, in interest payments better off not to be sniffed at over the long period uh, likewise i've got 295,000 sat in the bank right now and from around 1955 onwards i've been profitable more years than not the real difficulty is those first 5 years because it does take time for these services to get up to full speed. So uh, this chap that we're watching now, uh, you know, he is forced to wait until full every time he's, he's waiting for, for raw goods. Um, and, uh, and, and that does mean that there's a lag at the start of the build. So my recommendation would be don't buy all of your carts until you need them. Um, the most uh, perhaps interesting thing about this particular setup is the amount of money that road services are making. Now, I've got, what, uh, 12, 13 carts maybe in total running, and uh, and they're making good money. If I, if I pull up the, uh, the routes menu here, you can see that the two shuttles particularly, uh, you know, with three on each, uh, on each route, are making magnificent money. So it's, you know, this is very much... Um, the, what we envisaged happening. If anything, if I'd uh, if I'd broken my own rules and added uh, another cart to each of the two shuttles, I'd have made even more money out of that. Arguably, considerably more, given the ability to move things along. But carts, much like ships, do not move quickly. So uh, this chap here is delivering food to Desborough. Well, it doesn't look very far, does it? But it's going to be a good six, eight, nine months before he actually makes a delivery. And at that speed, he's only going to be making one delivery a year. This is not a way to be profitable. So should you start with ships? By all means. Uh, but don't expect to make big money early. They are relatively cheap to set up. Uh, running a ship, I mean, even now, a 10-year-old ship is costing me sub 33000 to run, while bringing in, in a bad year, 66000 So it's paying for itself several times over. Uh, last year, for example, it made 165000 You know, that's five-plus times profit. Uh, but it just doesn't make it quickly. So it's not the fastest way to success, and it's not the fastest way you're going to expand your network. But that doesn't mean you should rule it out. So my next line of thinking was, well, what if I recreated exactly the same route, but instead used trains? Taking everything that I've experimented with so far, so minimizing costs and centralizing my goods deliveries to uh, the, the closest part to the center of town as possible, even if that does cost a little more to place the station, is it possible to yield a much greater profit using the great iron horse itself? Uh, given its increased speed of delivery, surely there must be an easy way to make some cash that way. Now, my overall scheme for this was to use three stations in total, one of which would be in the final town in Blackwater, Another would be receiving goods from the farm, 
the third at the processing plant. Now, maybe I could expand this out by adding a cart service to Desborough, but my primary goal is to see if with one train, can I both pick up and deliver goods to both ends at the same time. This requires something of a convoluted route. All being well, the running cost should be that low, and the number of profitable runs I make should be significant, so there should be some hope of a mixed consist train paying off quite nicely. The train needs to be mixed consist, of course, because not only am I picking up livestock and grain, uh, but I'm also going to be picking up goods to return them in the opposite direction in the shape of food. And the livestock and food car are exactly the same box wagon. So for every shipment I make by train, I'm only going to be able to bring half of it back with food. Therefore, the other half does need to be shipped by cart once again. Now, cart's not going to be the most effective ever, but providing I don't build up too much of a bottleneck at one end or the other, I should still end up in a, in a relatively strong position. So, as ever, let's run this forward by 10 years and see where we get to. Here we are 10 years later, and perhaps unsurprisingly, we haven't quite made a profit. We invested an extra half million in getting set up in the first place. Trains are an expensive business, and the track costs alone were pretty significant. For the most part of its lifetime, this train has been running with a full load going in both directions. But the distances involved were such that it just didn't make enough money. We weren't getting enough throughput in order for the train to really pay off. Add to that the additional running costs of a train, and quite quickly you can come unstuck. If you look at the most profitable year on the screen, where we made just short of 370000 that's actually less than twice the amount the train costs to run. So ships are significantly cheaper with that regard and can generate significantly more profit. But few things actually have the throughput that a train has. Now this might have worked out better if I'd have shipped by cart the goods back from the original train station. That would have also saved me the cost of demolishing buildings in uh, Blackwater to begin with. However, this is a, it's a high-risk approach, and once again, this is something that you should really consider building after you've already got a profitable network. So, would I advocate starting with goods where trains are fulfilling every aspect of it? No, it's too expensive. You can run a train service with goods attached, most certainly, but you're going to need to supplement that with carts in order to keep your running costs low and your throughput high. This leaves us with perhaps one of the most obvious routes possible. Running passengers by train with a cart network at either end to bring more passengers to the station. The critical thing to actually making this work is finding the right two towns to connect in the first place. As you can see here I've got Winslow and Blackwater which conveniently are on the same elevation and that's critical. Not having to build bridges or tunnels or have big changes in elevation between your two towns to begin with is going to make all the difference to the cost of track laying. And given that we don't want to run up more loans in the first instance, that's all important. The big question you're going to have when finding two towns that are this close together and on the right elevation is how many wagons you should actually add. In train fever, you might have added as many wagons as possible and then when new technology came along, replaced the entire train. The emphasis on running costs in transport fever, however, means that you should probably start conservatively with three or four coaches to start with, and then add more as time progresses and you can afford them, doing this by returning the train to the depot and adding more coaches manually. Since I'm running a 10-year project, I've decided to add all my coaches in one go. This will hit my profitability a little for the first few years, but hopefully it should pay off over time. The one weakness I'm going to have is an inability to add more wagons as I get more profitable. Ten years later, and what do you know? We're in profit. Finally, I found something that would make me good money without too much effort. Not only do I have a positive balance, but I've also paid the loan down by one and a half million. We've also got a steady, profitable income coming in. By not locking myself to one consist for ten years straight, I could have made even more money by adding more coaches to this train. Likewise, there's more efficiency I could have had at either station by adding more coaches to the internal routes that were picking up passengers and bringing them around. That said, this was just making money quite happily and I could have left it alone. In fact, if this were a game that I was running for a longer period, my next step would probably have been to find another two towns that were similarly set up and run a similar train. As much as the temptation might have been to double track this route and then add another train doing the opposite run, 
That would have actually doubled my costs at the same time, while potentially cannibalizing profits from the other train. If your main objective is growing your network quickly, I suggest that using a simple route like this would do just the job in order to cover the costs of setting up a goods train or goods by ship. Equally, passenger shipping can be profitable. You just need to find the right route that is going to turn it around nice and quick. But if you've got a passenger train service like this one, then actually most of your costs are going to be covered. So you can use this to grow your lines in a more significant fashion. Is this the only way to make money? Of course not. I already have a reputation for being able to spend money like nobody else in this game. And therefore, I'm sure you'll find other ways to make money that I haven't yet found. The aim here is simply to offer you several different perspectives on the first few years and how you might turn that around in order to make some good money without too much effort. Whether you find this useful or whether you violently disagree, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you've not already done so, so you don't miss out on the main series that I'm running. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Colonel Failure. Cheerio.